second of the afternoon. Halligan toward the near sideline, and it's picked off at the 13-yard line by Jimmy Archie, and Archie just stepped right in. Looking toward the end zone, he's got a man, it's Duffy. Touchdown, Tigers, what a throw by Brock Hardy. The sights and sounds of the 1995 Princeton University football season faded away with a late November afternoon. But the memories left behind by these Tigers will live on forever. All signs pointed toward a successful season at Old Nassau in 95. 14 starters returned from a 7-3 team led by Captain Dave Patterson. Patterson set a school record with 130 tackles in 1994 and was a unanimous All-Ivy selection at linebacker. Darrell Oliveira was also an All-League performer. He was a dominant force at defensive end. On offense, four starting linemen returned, led by three-year starters John Need and Carter Westfall. Despite this returning talent and experience, the Tigers were not seen as a favorite to win the Ivy League title in 95. All that would change once they took the field. Under Steve Toshis, Princeton shared the Ivy League title in 1989 and 1992, but not since 1964 had Princeton been crowned as the outright Ivy League champion. In 1995, the 31-year wait would end. The determination and togetherness of the 1995 Princeton Tigers was undying in their quest for Ivy. The Princeton Tigers began their 126th season of college football at historic Palmer Stadium with their annual Ivy League battle with the Big Red of Cornell. Junior quarterback Harry Nicolni had a career day as Princeton assaulted Cornell through the air. The Tigers started 1995 by scoring on their first possession. Nicolni connected with junior wide receiver Kevin Duffy, and the Tigers were quickly on top, 7-0. Nicolni's hot hand continued on the next drive. Two completions to Duffy put the ball at the 44. Mike Clifford's 15-yard reception on third and 12 moved the Tigers into Cornell territory. Two plays later, the county found Clifford again, and the sophomore fullback sprinted down the right sideline for a 39-yard touchdown, and Princeton took a 14-0 lead. Meanwhile, senior defensive end Darrell Oliveira picked up where he left off in 1994 as one of the Ivy League's most feared pass rushers. Oliveira led the defensive charge with a team-high 13 tackles. Princeton led 17-7 in the third quarter when Captain Dave Patterson recovered a fumble at the Cornell 33, fueling the Tigers' next score. The county started by hitting Alex House for 16 yards. The Sayreville, New Jersey native capped the drive with his third touchdown pass of the game, his second to Duffy, and Princeton led 24-7. For the game, the county set career highs in attempts, completions, yards, and touchdowns. He was 22 of 28, including 12 in a row, for 256 yards. Holding an 11-point lead late in the fourth, the Tiger D stuffed Chad Levitt at the goal line, jarring the ball loose. Rich Hill recovered it at the one-yard line, and the Tigers held on to defeat Cornell for the seventh time in the last nine meetings, 24-22. With Harry Nickelny sidelined with a thumb injury suffered in practice, senior Brock Harvey made his fifth career start in week two as the Tigers hosted the Bucknell Bison. The Tiger defense set the tone for this game early as they stifled Bucknell on their first possession. Princeton grabbed the early lead when junior running back Mark Washington carried 16 yards for his first touchdown of the season. The defense was tremendous in the first half as Brian Grudy sacked Jim Fox for a six yard loss. Bucknell threatened midway through the second, but cornerback Damani Leach intercepted Fox at the six. Bucknell's Rich Lemon came into the game with 17 straight 100-yard games. Against the orange and black, he could manage just 15 yards on 13 carries. The Tigers began to pull away in the third quarter as they moved just 25 yards in five plays. Brock Harvey capped the drive with his first rushing touchdown of the season. Still in the third, Mark Washington broke loose for a 34-yard run down to the Bucknell 26. Kevin Duffy's 18-yard reception set up Brock Harvey's second score of the game. 
Harvey's going to keep it himself in the option. Across the five, dives toward the end zone. Touchdown, Brock Harvey. Harvey's touchdown run helped give Princeton a 20-3 lead. Early in the fourth quarter, sophomore Damani Leach denied Bucknell for the second time inside the 10. With a 17-point lead, the Princeton pass rush became even more fierce. Dave Patterson recorded his first sack of the season. Oliveira notched his second of the game as he dominated the line of scrimmage. Princeton sacked Fox five times on the afternoon and intercepted him three times as Princeton held Bucknell to only 268 total yards. On offense, the Princeton running game piled up 212 yards behind Mark Washington's career-high 154. The win put Princeton at 2-0 for the fifth time in nine seasons under Steve Toshes. The Tigers' first road game of the season was in Hamilton, New York, home of the Colgate Red Raiders. Week three saw Brock Harvey make his second straight start at quarterback for the injured Harry Nickelney in a game filled with offense. Trilling 3-0 late in the second quarter, Princeton moved in for their first score behind the running of Mark Washington. The drive ended when Washington carried 19 yards around right end and Princeton took the lead 7-3. The Tigers came out in the second half and re-established their running game. After 116 first half yards, Washington picked up 27 more off the option. On the next play, Harvey kept it himself for 13 more. Three plays later, it was Harvey again. This time he found the end zone and Princeton was back on top, 14-10. On the Tigers' next possession, Harvey showed his talents as a passer. His 19-yard strike to Kevin Duffy on third and 11 kept the Tigers moving. Roldy Acosta's 15-yard reception set up the Tigers' third touchdown. Harvey drops back the pass, rolls to the near side, looking toward the end zone. He's got a man, it's Duffy. Touchdown, Tigers. What a throw by Brock Harvey. The Harvey to Duffy connection gave Princeton a 21-10 lead. The pesky Red Raiders forged ahead 23-21 early in the fourth quarter before sophomore linebacker Tim Green intercepted Mark Lindell and returned it to the Colgate 30-yard line. From there, it was two straight Washington runs. His 11-yard score helped Princeton regain the lead 27-23. Dave Patterson set up the decisive score when he forced a fumble that was recovered by Darrell Oliveira with seven minutes remaining. Frank Godak blasted 19 yards up the middle down to the Colgate 11. Then the junior from Ashland, Kentucky scored his third touchdown of the game to secure Princeton's third win in a row, 34-23. For Washington, it was his best day as a Tiger. He shattered his career mark of 154 yards rushing set in week two with a 219-yard performance. It was the 10th highest single game total in school history. Leading the way for Washington was all Ivy center John Need. Need's grade of 96 was the highest single game grade in the last five seasons. On defense, linebacker Dave Patterson racked up 16 tackles and forced two fumbles. He was named the Ivy League Defensive Player of the Week. On the road again in week four, the Tigers took their 3-0 record to rainy Providence, Rhode Island for an Ivy League matchup with the 2-1 Brown Bears. Early in the first quarter, Brown's potent aerial attack was grounded when Damani Leach intercepted his third pass of the season. Starting from their own 34 late in the first quarter, the Tigers marched toward their first score. Pullback Mike Clifford, who led the team with 51 yards on the ground, picked up 22 on this drive. Princeton took the lead, and Brock Harvey tossed his second touchdown of the season to Kevin Duffy. For Duffy, it was his team leading fourth touchdown reception. Trailing 13-7 in the third, the Tigers' big play defense provided the spark. It's intercepted by Jimmy Archie at the 47. Archie dives toward the 42-yard line, and that's where Princeton will take over first and 10. After a pass interference call against the Bears, Harvey carried for 13 yards. Mike Clifford went over from the one, and the Tigers regained the lead 14-13. On the ensuing kickoff, Princeton took control, and Brett Budzinski's bubble recovery helped produce the game-winning score. Key play on this short drive came on third and 13, when Harvey connected with senior Rolly Acosta for 22. 
on first and goal. Harvey went four yards for the score with two minutes left in the third quarter. 2013 Princeton. Brown scored on their next drive and went for two in the tie. Sophomore sensation Damani Leach deflected Jason McCullough's pass to preserve the 21-19 lead. Late in the game, Brown drove to the Princeton 27. Defensive end Dale Bartley sacked McCullough for a five-yard loss. Then, on fourth down, the defense sealed Princeton's fourth win in a row when McCullough was swarmed by the Tiger pass rush and sacked by Darrell Oliveira at the 34 with two and a half minutes remaining. Under Steve Toshis, Princeton has dominated Patriot League opponents, winning eight straight. In week five, the 4-0 Tigers made it nine straight as they trounced Lafayette. The wet conditions helped set up the Tigers' first score when Bob DeBolt recovered a misplayed punt at the Lafayette 12-yard line. Mike Clifford cashed in the turnover with a one-yard plunge. Damani Leach continued his stellar play at cornerback with his fourth interception in five games. This led to the Tigers' second score. From his own 11, Brock Harvey guided the offense to the Lafayette 42. From there, the senior from Farmington Hills, Michigan, broke loose. And Harvey's going to take it himself across the 40 to 35, stumbles across the 30, gets his footing across the 25 to 20, 15. He's going to walk into the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers. Harvey's fifth rushing touchdown of the season made it 14-0 Princeton. Tom Ludwig's first interception of the season and Jimmy Archie's sack of Sean McHale keyed a first half shutout of the Leopards. The takeaways continued in the third quarter. Sam Young's fumble recovery led to an Alex Searc field goal. The freshman's 45-yarder was the longest at Princeton in nine years. He was named the Ivy League Rookie of the Week. The Tigers' vaunted rush defense was relentless in the second half, led by linebacker Dave Patterson. Following McHale's second fumble of the game, Princeton put the game out of reach. Harvey, who was 8 of 12 for 110 yards, hooked up with Brett Budzinski for 32. Mike Clifford picked up 12 more. Mark Washington took it over from the two, and the route was on. Harry Nicolini, working his way back from injury, led Princeton to their fourth touchdown. From the 12, Nicolini hit Kevin Duffy, who fumbled at the one, but it was recovered by Damian Taylor for the touchdown, putting Princeton up 34-0. The 41-0 drubbing of Lafayette was the Tigers' largest margin of victory since 1969. Princeton used seven turnovers to notch their first shutout since 1993. The Tigers were now 5-0 for the third time in the last five seasons as they swept the Patriot League for the third consecutive year. The Princeton Tigers continued their storied rivalry with the Harvard Crimson in week six under heavy rain at Harvard Stadium. The Crimson were 1-4 and four and winless in league play, while Princeton shared the Ivy's top spot. Following a Tim Green fumble recovery on the game's first series, the offense moved behind the running of Mark Washington. Washington, who had his fifth career 100-yard day, had 30 on this drive, as Princeton moved 56 yards, setting up a third and goal at the four. Harvey found Kevin Duffy in the back of the end zone for the touchdown, and Princeton took an early 7-0 lead. Harry Nickelney returned to form in the first half as part of Princeton's new two-quarterback system. Nickelney completed 8 of 11 passes for 75 yards. The Princeton defense continued its stellar play, giving up only three points through three quarters. Late in the third, it was Harvey and Duffy sparking the offense. First, they converted on third and 13. Then, they connected for six. Got a man at Duffy at the eight. Nobody there. Touchdown, Tigers. What a play by the Princeton offense. Duffy's Ivy League leading sixth touchdown reception of the season increased the Princeton lead to 14-3. The fourth quarter belonged to strong safety Jimmy Archie. With nine minutes to play, he denied Harvard on fourth and three. Two minutes later, he saved a touchdown. Looking for Halligan toward the near sideline, and it's picked off at the 13-yard line by Jimmy Archie, and Archie just stepped right in front of his receiver. With under a minute to go, Archie's fumble recovery on the six-yard line ended Harvard's comeback bid, kept the Tigers unbeaten at 6-0 and 3-0 in the Ivy League. Up next, a battle for first place with Columbia.
The Ivy League's marquee matchup in Week 7 pitted the Princeton Tigers against the Columbia Lions in a first-place showdown at Palmer Stadium. However, this battle of Ivy unbeatens was all orange and black. Captain Dave Patterson set the tone, intercepting Mike Cavanaugh on the game's second play. One play later, the Tigers were in the end zone when Brock Harvey carried 18 yards for the score just 31 seconds into the game. Columbia's next possession ended like their first. Emerging as one of the top cornerbacks in the Ivies, Damani Leach snared his sixth INT. That led to an Alex Searc field goal, and Princeton was up 10-0. The Tigers came in ranked second in the nation in turnover ratio. By game's end, they would be number one. Senior linebacker Ryan Moore intercepted Princeton's fourth pass in the first quarter. Columbia made it five straight turnovers when John Harper's fumble was recovered by Dave Patterson. Then the offense joined in. Mark Washington, who had a career-high 102 yards receiving, went 51 yards on a pass from Harvey down to the Columbia 7. Ben Gill's four-yard touchdown catch gave the Tigers a 17-0 lead early in the second quarter. The pickoff fest continued in the second quarter. Senior safety Hans Schroeder's first of the season led to another Tiger touchdown. Harry Nickelny, the younger half of Princeton's quarterback duo, had his pass deflected into the hands of Kevin Duffy for a 43-yard pass and catch. The quick four-play drive was capped by Mike Clifford, 24-0 Princeton. The Tiger pass rush was unyielding as they sacked Mike Cavanaugh three times, forcing him into five first-half interceptions. Sophomore cornerback Damani Leach took the one double-A per game lead with his seventh pick of the season. He was named Ivy League Defensive Player of the Week. While in command 24-0, the Princeton offense came out in the second half and left no doubt who was the Ivy League's top dog. Mixing the run in the pass, they manhandled the Columbia defense, moving 80 yards in only six plays. Washington's sixth rushing touchdown made it 31-0 Tigers. In the fourth quarter, senior cornerback Rich Hill intercepted the team's seventh pass of the game, tying the Ivy League record set by Princeton back in 1987. For the game, the Princeton big play defense forced Columbia into nine turnovers as they hammered the Lions 44-14. At 7-0, the Tigers were alone to top the Ivy standings with three games remaining. The past two seasons, Pennsylvania ended Princeton's hopes for an Ivy title. This year, the Quakers stood in the Tigers' way. A victory in Week 8 on famed Franklin Field would be critical in their quest for the school's first outright Ivy League championship in 31 years. In true 1995 fashion, the Tigers got off to a quick start. Brock Harvey used his elusiveness and scrambled 50 yards down the sideline to the Penn 20. Three plays later, the Tigers were on the board. Five-step drop, Harvey looking right on the way. It's not there. He spins off it in trouble and finally gets rid of it for a touchdown to Washington in a Boston play. Mark Washington just kept alive down the sideline and Harvey found him. Penn went three and out on their first possession before Tom Ludwig's 17-yard return put Princeton at midfield. That was Harry Nickelny's turn. The junior lofted a beautiful pass to Kevin Duffy, who beat two Penn defenders for a 37-yard touchdown. Duffy's seventh TD catch put Princeton up 14-0, five and a half minutes into the game. Penn quarterback Mark DeRosa would have a long day, throwing into the Princeton secondary led by the nation's leading interceptor, Damani Leach. Darrell Oliveira gave DeRosa a taste of what was to come with this sack in the second quarter. On the second half's opening kickoff, the Tigers pinned Penn deep in their own end. This set up the offense in great field position. On third and eight, Rolly Acosta made a spectacular catch at the two. Mark Washington took it in from there for the Tigers' third touchdown. Harvey made it 22-9 when he connected with Brent Godek on the two-point conversion. Early in the third quarter, Oliveira and Patterson began to dominate. Oliveira made the pocket his domain with three and a half sacks. He was the Ivy League co-defensive player of the week. Captain Dave Patterson also put on a brilliant performance. His 19 tackles made him the school's all-time career leader. 
Still leading by 13 in the fourth quarter, the Princeton defense stopped Penn three times deep in their own territory to preserve the win. The final stand came with seven minutes to go. Oliveira greeted DeRosa for the final time on second and goal, dumping him for a nine yard loss. Mark Whaling deflected the third down pass attempt. Heavy pressure from Jimmy Archie forced an incompletion on fourth down, and Penn's reign as Ivy champion was over. At 8-0, the Tigers remain focused in their quest for Ivy. Princeton hosted Yale in their final home game of 1995, renewing college football's second longest rivalry. Yale came to Palmer Stadium struggling at 2-6. The Elis were determined to spoil the Tigers' bid to clinch a share of the 1995 Ivy title. On the game's first play, Brock Harvey electrified the wet homecoming crowd. The 30, the 45, the 50, the 45 of Yale. They're not going to get him. He's going to go all the way. A 92-yard unofficial touchdown run by Brock Harvey to get things started. And Princeton goes on top 6 to nothing with 14 minutes, 40 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Harvey's 92-yard jaunt was one yard shy of a Princeton record. Yale responded by driving to the Princeton 18. Sophomore free safety Tom Ludwig stopped the Elis at the 10. With the game tied at 7 in the second quarter, Princeton orchestrated a 15-play, 80-yard drive. Brock Harvey hit on four of five passes as the Tigers moved in for the go-ahead touchdown. Kevin Duffy pulled in his eighth touchdown catch of the season, and Princeton regained the lead 13-7. The Tiger D put on a strong first-half performance sacking Yale's Chris Hetherington three times. Senior linebacker Ryan Moore picked up his second of the year, while senior defensive tackle Brian Grudy notched his fourth. Protecting a 13-7 lead late in the third, Princeton turned Yale away at the goal line. Damani Leach forced the fumble and Rich Hill recovered it at the one. Trailing 14-13 late in the game, Princeton's hopes for an unbeaten season were sacked, but their Ivy title hopes were still alive heading into the season finale with Dartmouth. On the Ivy League's final Saturday, Princeton was now tied for first place with Cornell. The Tigers needed to defeat Dartmouth to secure a share of the 95 title, but a Cornell loss would open the door for an outright Ivy League championship. This was a classic defensive battle in New Hampshire's Upper Valley as both teams were scoreless until late in the second quarter. Dartman struck first, but the Tigers roared back. Damani Leach sparked the orange and black with a 47-yard kickoff return, putting Princeton at the Dartmouth 48. With 2.43 to go before the half, Harina County took charge and drove the offense to the six-yard line with 16 seconds remaining. Then, the county connected with the Tigers' top gun, Kevin Duffy, for the touchdown. Duffy's league-leading ninth touchdown reception of the year gave him the second highest season total in Princeton history. Jimmy Archie intercepted John L. Jantic on the Big Green's next possession, and the score was tied at seven at the half. There was more stingy defense in the second half as Princeton held Dartmouth to a mere 94 yards of total offense and three points. The Big Green managed only 236 yards for the game. Those three points were the difference as Princeton trailed 10-7 with 4.25 to go in the game. With Cornell losing to Penn, the Tigers knew they could win the outright Ivy League title on their final possession of 1995. On third and five, Brock Harvey hit Brent Godek for nine down to the 40. A nine yard completion to Ben Gill and Princeton was in field goal range at the 20. With 15 seconds left in the season, the ball was in Harvey's hands and the senior tucked it away up the sideline, was knocked out of bounds at the one with four seconds to go. A field goal would give Princeton its first outright Ivy League title in 31 years. Freshman Alex Sear calmly booted the 18-yard field goal, and the Princeton Tigers captured the 1995 outright Ivy League championship for the first time since 1964. This is the, the greatest experience I've ever had. Uh, and I think for the most part because of the closeness of this team and uh, you know, particularly uh, the senior class, um, I mean, it, it's just a great feeling 
not only to go out and win a lot of football games and win a championship and get a ring, but to do it with people that you care about and uh, people that you're close with, you know, and you create a bond that's going to be there forever. Dave Patterson was the leader of a senior class that finished with a three-year varsity record of 23-6-1 and, and captured Princeton's first outright Ivy League title in 31 years. These 24 student athletes will be forever linked with the great Princeton teams of all time as they added their chapter to the storied Princeton football tradition. At season's end, Patterson became the fifth Princeton player and only the sixth defensive player in Ivy League history to receive the Asa S. Bushnell Cup as the league's most valuable player. The ferocious linebacker led the Tigers with 129 tackles, 13 in the opponent's backfield. He finished his brilliant career as the school's all-time leading tackler with 352. Patterson was a unanimous first-team All-Ivy choice on defense for the second straight year. He was joined on the first team by senior defensive end Darrell Oliveira and sophomore cornerback Damani Leach. The 6'4", 250-pound Oliveira was also a repeat first-team selection. He registered 60 tackles and was Princeton's top sacker with 7.5. Damani Leach exploded onto the scene, leading the nation in interceptions per game with eight in 10 games. Princeton led the nation in turnover margin. Three Tigers were chosen to the second team defense. Senior defensive tackle Brian Grudy was second on the team with four sacks. Senior linebacker Ryan Moore was Princeton's second leading tackler with 77. With 45 unassisted tackles, eight of those for a loss and four interceptions, Junior Jimmy Archie established himself as one of the league's top defensive backs. Sophomores Tim Green and Tom Ludwig were honorable mention selections. Green was third on the team with 69 tackles, while Ludwig was fourth with 65. Dave Patterson was recognized as one of the nation's best, along with Damani Leach. Patterson was named second team All-American, while Leach was a third team selection. Two senior linemen, John Need and Carter Westfall, represented Princeton on the first team All-Ivy offense. Need centered a line that produced the league's third best rushing attack. Westfall started every game of his career at right guard. The second team featured two of Princeton's top skill players. Junior Kevin Duffy led the Ivy League with nine touchdown receptions. He led the Tigers with 41 receptions for 583 yards. Mark Washington rushed for 937 yards, the 10th highest total in school history. The junior tied for the team lead with seven rushing touchdowns. He also caught 20 passes for 233 yards and a touchdown. Senior offensive tackle Brad Pulowski was honorable mention. Senior quarterback Brock Harvey did not receive postseason league honors, but was a key performer all year. He threw seven touchdown passes with only one interception while rushing for seven scores. Harvey ended his career 11-2 as a starter. He is one of seven players representing Princeton in the annual Ivy Epson Bowl. Jimmy Archie and Mark Washington were selected to captain the Tigers in 1996. They will proudly defend Princeton's first outright Ivy League championship in 31 years and begin another quest for Ivy.